I want to say to Bishop Dowell, I appreciate your consideration. He's the same gentleman that cussed me out about the remarriage and divorce. The same one that said you can have three or four wives. You are a false ass prophet. And you need to shut your damn mouth, nigga. You ever notice that? Yes. Watch him, he's breaching like this. A damn demon up in his ass. And we all, I hope that more than anything, I know he did, that I put my foot so far up in Gino Jenny's ass you can't even surgically remove it. Lying bastard. You know, I don't give a nickel's worth of rat's ass about none of the asses. Amazing. Very true. You assholes can't address a damn thing concerning truth. Come on, mm -hmm. Take issue with the doctrine. That's it. Because I just exposed y'all that damn lying ass preacher. You damn anti Messiah bitch. <laughs> that means dog. Yeah, that's called righteous indignation because he's taking a lot of souls with him. That's not righteous indignation. That's a spirit of profanity. Those words are the names of spirits. And every time you speak them, you're summoning evil spirits. The power of life and death is in the tongue. But I understand your frustration with Pastor oh. Geno Jennings. But it's common. It's common. Amen. Amen. It's common among some cultures. And it's common among some religions. That's right. Yeah, me good. And Amnon was so vexed that he felt sick <clears throat> for his sister Tamar. Yes. For she was a virgin. And Amnon thought of Now hold it. Mm -hmm. Back in those days when a woman was a virgin, she wore garments of multicolors. That's right. Mixed color garment. That's right. Amen. And then when her virginity was violated, she tore the garment. Yeah. Then covered herself in sackcloth and in ashes. That's right. Rape is not consensual fornication. <laughs> no. Now, in this sermon, I believe Geno Jennings missed an opportunity to break down why virgins were so esteemed in the Old Testament. Often, he picks the most universally accepted subjects to preach on. Although, in this sermon, he does make some good points. There are churches that teach this. That's right. And use the Bible. That's right. Where in the Old Testament, where they went amongst family, yeah. but it was a shadow right. of good things to come because in the New Testament, it represented marrying only in the body of Christ. That's it. Your brother and your sister in the body of Christ, not outside of the body. That's right. But a scripture that's prominent among false prophets mm -hmm. is when Lot's daughters yeah. got them drunk. That's right. And then lay with their father. The father. And one daughter, son name was Moab, Moab, who is the father of the Moabites. Mm -hmm. The other son is Ammon, Ammon, who is the father of the Ammonites. That's right. So they use scripture yeah. of events that's past and not allowed today. That's right. To justify themselves of yesterday. That's right. See, the Pastor Gino speaks some truth here, but he does not further elaborate. Polygyny and incest are not allowed today because the bloodlines were compromised by the fallen angels. So God strived to keep his promise to Adam and Abraham, commanding them to be fruitful and multiply, to populate enough righteous seed in the earth to disarm the serpent seed. Here's a short clip of Pastor Gino some years ago where he was dismissing that the fallen angels made it with the daughters now, of men. Let's the get women. this in the book of Genesis. Genesis chapter 6. This is where preachers have lied mm -hmm. and said angels mm -hmm. had sex with women. Now, for those who watch this video, 
Ask Pastor Gino, why did God curse Eve in that area of her body with the blood flow of impurity? If she was not defiled sexually by the serpent, why would he curse her in that area? Especially considering that 1 Corinthians chapter 6 verse 18 says he who commits fornication sins against his own body. That's right. Are oh, you listen to the old troublemaker? That's right. Preachers have said that the falling angels mm -hmm. had sex with the women of the earth and the women birthed giants from having intercourse right. with angels. That's right. Come tell me that lie and make you lick it up. That's right. I stretch your tongue from earth to heaven from heaven to earth. Amen. Let me show you the lie. Mm -hmm. Listen. Genesis chapter 6, we'll start at and verse 1. And then let's get further in Joshua. Mm -hmm. All right, let's go to work. Genesis chapter 6 and at verse 1. Genesis 6 and 1. And it came to pass when men began to multiply on the face of the earth. Now, when men began to multiply on the face of the earth, in order for that to happen, men had to go to women. That's right. And then women began to get pregnant and have children. Mm hmm all right, men begin to men. multiply. Mm -hmm. That means women was having children, having babies. Right. All right. And daughters were born unto them. Daughters were born unto them. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. Now, that very title, sons of God, offset men. Right. Sons of God, mm -hmm. it confused the preachers. Right. The sons of God were the daughters of men. That's right. Don't you hear the Bible saying, now we are the sons of God. That's right. Sons of God simply meant the men of the earth because the men were made in God's image. That's right. Listen. That the sons of God saw the daughters of men that they were fair. And what? And they took them wives of all which they chose. Took them wives of all they have chosen. Mm -hmm. Now let me show you the stupidity of the preachers. Mm -hmm. It's impossible for an angel to have sperm. That's right. Not if they left their first estate, sir. Angel from heaven. From heaven to have sperm that's right because sperm carries blood that's right huh? that's right sperm i say sperm carry blood that's right so now let's look at the nature of angels in hebrews chapter 1 and at verse 7 see, i love the atomized things that's right uh -huh. hebrews chapter 1 and verse 7 hebrews 1 and 7 and of the angels he says of the angels he said who maketh his angels spirits what natures do angels have who maketh his angels spirits spirits don't have sperm no that's right spirits don't have babies no 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 now another lie that the preachers said they said those were the falling angels right that went unto these women that's, that's right. another lie that's right the angels that was cast out of heaven they're in prison in prison that's give me right the book of jude jude chapter one and at verse six you get what i'm talking amen give chapter and verse again jude chapter one and at verse six what is it and the angels which kept not their first estate the angels that did not keep their first estate but hold it the first estate of the angels mean the first place they were holy holy you see when god made the angels they was made holy that's right. They didn't have to strive to become holy. No. They was made holy. Okay. Allow me to unpack his misrepresentation of the scriptures. I have four points here. Number one, angels are spirits so long as they keep their first estate. Okay. We also saw this with God himself. Christ, the word was made flesh. You see that. So that's evidence that a spirit, God, can be made flesh, especially since flesh was created by God, okay? And the fallen angels, again, did not keep their first estate. Number two, those angels that he mentioned that are in chains of darkness, mentioned in the book of Jude, they are there because they defiled themselves with women, okay? Their first estate was holy before they were defiled in their bodies. The scriptures say some have entertained angels unaware. So they certainly take on the appearance of men or human beings. And they even ate food in the book of Genesis. Okay. The estate represents their body, their, their host. Okay. Their person. All right. The scriptures refer to this mortal body as a house. It also refers to it as a tent a temple you see that but if you are carnal 
you cannot fathom how this body is a house or a tent. Okay, such is the same with the angels. But Genesis chapter 6 emphasized that they were giants. Okay, they put great emphasis on them being giants. Such was not the case before. Otherwise, there's no reason to be talking about the uh, sons of God mating with the daughters of, of men. Okay, because they were already doing that beforehand. You see what I'm saying? And of course, God himself is a spirit. And again, he appeared in the flesh. And he was able to shed his blood, which is even more of a mystery, that it's a covenant, a blood covenant for every human host. Okay. It's a blood covenant for every human host that he shed it for. Okay. Pastor Gino is also in error, claiming that God cannot shed blood and God cannot die. This is why he believes Christ was not God on earth. And the angels which kept not their first estate. The angels that kept not their first estate. But left. They left. Their own their habitation. Own habitation. He has reserved an everlasting chain. He has reserved the everlasting chain. Under darkness. Under darkness. Unto the judgment of the great day. Where are they? In everlasting chains under dark. Them angels that was cast out of heaven, they're in chains. Everlasting chains. They, how long? Everlasting Their chains. chains are eternal. That's right. And God have never gave one parole to have sex. No, no. Huh? No, no. No, they, 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 didn't, they didn't have a parole and no. had a little uh, ankle bracelet. And no, no. <laughs> Ever, everlasting chains. Fool. Amen. These dumb, ignorant preachers, think of it. Angels going around and having sex. My Lord. Angels are spirit. That's right. Spirit don't have sperm. Ye do error not knowing the scriptures. Why did they tell? Give chapter and verse. Matthew chapter 22 and at verse 29. This is give you, give, This will give you the reason why the preachers told that lie. Ye do error the, not the error, knowing the scriptures. The error. Error. The error. The error. No, you're the one who error, Pastor Gino. You just lost your only way to explain in depth why fornication is a sin and why polygyny is a sin. Also, you cannot explain how demons possess human beings without explaining how they came to access their bloodlines. All right, the human beings, their bloodlines. You can't explain the greatest sin Satan committed. All right, so let me explain it. Now, I've already established how God cursed Eve in the area where she committed fornication. Okay, the flow of her impurity was corrupted by the serpent's seed. So here's the bloodline timeline, if you will. Okay, after Genesis 3, in Genesis chapter 4, verse 1, it says Eve gave birth to a man. A lot of people run over that scripture. Okay, she did not give a birth birth to a baby like women do today. Okay, because again, the bloodlines were not cursed like it was immediately after Adam and Eve fell. Okay, so they didn't feel the full effects of that curse of pain and sorrow and conception that God cursed Eve with. It would be perpetuated throughout the generations, okay? Because the curse could only advance as far as the severity, the sin would take it, okay? You got to explain how sin is imputed, all right? And this is not strange because in Genesis chapter 6, the women gave birth to giants. Catch that. They gave birth to giants which is described as the Nephilim. Okay, again, the scriptures emphasize that they were giants. The same emphasis placed on Goliath, okay, and, and uh, King Og, who was the king of Bashan. Okay, he was a giant as well, all right? But Eve literally gave birth to grown men, okay? She didn't have to labor as much. Her, her human flesh... Her, her person was far stronger than the average woman today. Okay, and remember, Enoch told Lamech, who was Noah's father, he told Lamech why Noah 
quote unquote looked like the angels because quote unquote the transgression of the fallen ones going into the daughters of men so it was not about god giving the angels parole to have sex that's the whole point that's why God put them in chains of darkness, because they went against what he commanded. Now, God had to flood the entire earth and spared only Noah and his seed in Genesis chapter 7. Some estimate that at least 50 million people were wiped off the face of the earth because those demigods attempted self-preservation through the bloodlines of men to escape the judgment. So God cut a new covenant through Noah's bloodline, Shem, Ham, and Japheth, and Abraham descended from the lineage of Shem. God promised to make him, Abraham, a father of many nations because he adhered to the program of faith. Therefore, his seed was righteous, although Abraham married his half-sister Sarah. According to Genesis chapter 20, verse 12, and Lot, Abraham's nephew, got drunk and impregnated both of his daughters in Genesis chapter 19. Today, both of those instances, we call that incest. God honored his covenant that Abraham should be fruitful and multiply. But remember, Canaan was cursed because Ham uncovered his father's nakedness, perhaps by uh, fondling Noah. Okay, that was some sick, perverted act that he committed. So Abraham's descendants were all commanded not to intermarry with the Canaanites just because of that one man's sin. You see how sin was perpetuated onto the children because now those people were influenced by worshiping demons. Those demons now had legal right to possess them because the demons possess blood. That's how they are able to come to possess men. But it originated from them mating with the daughters of men. I'll get to that later. But catch this. Even if it meant committing incest with their daughters and sisters, God was still going to deal with Abraham's descendants and keep them from intermarrying with people who were not in their bloodline, which would have not been incest at that time like it is today. Today, people intermarry with different races, okay? But at that time, God was commanding them not to intermarry. With, so it was the opposite. You see what I'm saying? That's, that's how great the impact of those fallen angels corrupting. If you don't explain that, you can't condemn anyone of fornication. You're not giving them the reason why some of the intricacies of why fornication is a sin. He's a false teacher. But let me continue. So Noah's bloodline was pure. Okay. And Abraham's seed was the most pure of his generation. So by the time we get to Jacob and Esau, at their birth in Genesis chapter 25, Rebecca notices that Esau is red and hairy. Now, this was the imprint perpetuated again from the transgression of the fallen ones. Now, God had to make a new covenant with Israel, the 12 sons of Jacob, which are the 12 tribes of Israel, because Esau disobeyed and married the foreign women. So, under the law of Moses, God instituted a penal system unlike any other in human history, just again to keep the Israelites holy and set apart from the pagan nations. Okay, these pagan nations had tainted blood. Leviticus chapter 15, verse 19 says, If a woman has a discharge, and the discharge from her body is blood. She shall be set apart seven days, and whoever touches her shall be unclean until evening. Verse 20, everything that she lies on during her impurity shall be unclean, 
Everything she sits on shall be unclean. <laughs> okay, verse 21. Whoever touches her bed shall wash his clothes and bathe in water and be unclean until evening. Okay, so throughout Leviticus chapter 15, the woman's impurity was regulated. And at this phase in history, men were permitted to have multiple wives so long as they were able to keep the Levitical laws of impurity. Why? Again, because the fallen angels produced evil spirits with the women, Pastor Dow. Okay. This is why you can't have multiple wives to this day because of that sin committed by the fallen angels. And also men on the earth, particularly the, the Israelites disobeying God and they married the Canaanite women and they married those foreign women. Okay. Their blood was tainted. We go to the book of Enoch chapter 12, verse four. It states again, how the watchers of heaven, the angels were created in heaven and not on earth like men, Pastor Gino, those watchers leaving their first estate, which was heaven, their, their host, their human host or their angelic host was of heaven. Okay, their person. But when they defiled themselves with women, they took unto themselves wives. Okay. Verse five says, Ye have wrought great destruction on the earth, and ye shall have no peace nor forgiveness of sin. So God say they're gonna have to pay the penalty for this. Okay, which is was those chains of darkness. Okay, uh, uh, Enoch chapter 15, verse 3 states again, Ye have left the high, holy, and eternal heaven, laid with the women, defiled themselves with the daughters of men. Uh, verse 4 states, The watchmen defiled themselves with the blood of women. Okay, now prior to Eve's encounter with the serpent, her blood was not defiled. So the only reason the angels and the woman was defiled is because God created them male and female. Anything else is perversion, which is not fitting. So now the spirits of the fallen ones produce demons who spiritually roam the earth to destroy men through the tainted bloodlines. Okay. Leviticus chapter 17, verse 14 says the life of all flesh is its blood. So there were 600 plus laws in the Torah to prevent the Israelites from getting demon possessed. This is why under the Torah, particularly Leviticus chapter 18, verse six, incest is no longer permitted and the penalty was that they were to be stoned to death. That was the only way they could cast the demon out. They had to stone the person to death to cast the demon out. But God still permitted men to have multiple wives at that time because the bloodlines had to be pure enough to birth Christ into the earth. We know that the Israelites forsook the law of Moses and again took foreign wives after the witchcraft of Balaam. So question. Pastor Dow, 4,000 years later, has the problem got better or worse? Okay, Jerusalem has gone into captivity, and this is the time of the Gentiles. Okay, we're, not, we're no longer under that law of Moses where they had laws to stone people to death if they broke the law of marriage and divorce and giving in marriage. Okay, the laws of adultery, incest, and so forth. From 1 Corinthians chapter 7, 9 to the end of times, the dynamics of marriage inherits even more restrictions. 1 Corinthians chapter 7, verse 9 says, From now on, those who have wives should be as though they have none. And in Revelation, God destroys the earth because the bloodlines will be so corrupt that before man has to face the burden of living on an earth with no marriage because the bloodlines are so tainted, 
God said, before, before it gets to that point, I'm just going to destroy the earth. Then there'll be a new heaven and a new earth where there is no giving, marrying and giving in marriage. You see that. So perpetual plague of the tainted bloodlines just gets worse and worse. That's the in-depth teaching here. Okay. You got to outline these details. Okay. And since sex is the exchange and mixing of blood, the old covenant is a shadow of the new covenant. And the new commandment is do not be unequally yoked with unbelievers. But unlike the old covenant where the Israelites were saved so long as they were not put to death for breaking the law of Moses, the new covenant, because the grace of God has been turned into lasciviousness, there are far less partakers in the faith than there were under the law of Moses. Most people are going to the lake of fire, according to Matthew chapter 7, verse 13 and 14. Now, what does that have to do with marriage? Okay, there in turn are far less believers for men and especially women to choose from. So the issue of monogamous marriage and polygyny is an issue of eternal life or damnation. Okay, because again, God commanded us not to be unequally yoked with unbelievers. There is a reason why King Solomon was warned by God that those wives will turn his heart from the Lord. God already prepared the Israelites to adopt that type of righteous mentality in Deuteronomy chapter 17, verse 17. He said, a king shall not multiply wives for himself because Satan can possess the woman far more than the man. Okay, that, that's how Satan came to corrupt the bloodlines through the woman. And again, life is in the blood. But the woman loses so much blood every month. Okay, it's one of the reasons why the scriptures say she is the weaker vessel. Okay, so in closing, God flooded the entire earth, killing millions, destroyed Sodom with fire. Sodom and Gomorrah, he destroyed with fire. Okay, he instituted the law of Moses and even bruised his own son just to offset the tainted bloodlines initiated by the fallen angels, okay? And that, my friends, is why fornication is a sin. That's why today we cannot have, we men cannot have multiple wives. And that is also why from the beginning, the woman wasn't created to be with multiple men, okay? Because she, she's further corrupting herself. She was already corrupted from that initial sin of the serpent. Then further corrupted by the fallen angels. Again, we get the flow of impurity, the bloodlines. Before that, Eve didn't have an impurity. So I hope you guys understand this. Geno Jennings, what I just broke down to you, he'll never break that down in his teachings. Okay. What he's saying is true that, yes, you can't have multiple wives, but he's not giving you the details like what I just explained. All right. But let me know your thoughts. Remember, don't let your flesh write checks. Your soul cannot cash in the afterlife.